Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Frampton Unplugged. Today the topic is all going to be around disruption. Uh, I know I've touched on it before, but asking the question of whether there are any industries uh, that are immune to disruption. So sorry for not posting quite as regular videos as I usually do, um, but it's been rather busy. Uh, I've taken on a bunch of new advisory roles, um, Big Youth Group, uh, which is my other passion, kind of improving the odds for young people, has really been rocketing. And we set up a new accelerator that is helping seven new startups in the first cohort. Um, and lastly, um, I'm getting close to hopefully landing uh, my new leadership role. So more on that one soon. So back to the topic of today. Um, is there any industry that will not be disrupted. So funnily enough this uh, kind of idea for a video came to me uh, from a conversation I had on Twitter um, over the last week or so uh, with a couple of interesting uh, kind of followers of mine, Tom Goodwin um, and some other folks. Uh, so I quoted uh, CB Insights who talked about the fact that the industries that are going to be disrupted uh, or have been disrupted largely fall into uh, three kind of attributes. Uh, the first being that they only have one or few major players. Uh, the second being that they have fairly outdated business practices. Uh, and the third being that they've been very slow to adopt technology. So fairly sound, but um, I put that out there and Tom uh, came back quite rightly and challenged it and said, um, actually, there are some industries that are on the verge of significant disruption, automotive being one of the examples he gave, uh, which don't fit into that category. There's lots of different players, lots of big players and small players in the auto category. Um, so I just wanted to do a bit of thinking around and kind of talking around this kind of whole area of what will be disrupted and what is perhaps slightly more immune to uh, kind of technology disruption. So if you look at um, many reports around the industries that either have or on the verge of significant disruption. Um, the order um, of industries that have felt the biggest disruption from digital transformation have been media, telco, uh, consumer financial services, so banking, uh, retail, um, and then kind of technology itself um, as, as mobile um, and kind of on-demand services have disrupted some of the kind of older kind of uh, ways of distributing software. Um, so if you look at those uh, categories, clearly technology has radically changed uh, how their businesses have worked. Uh, you look at media, um, obviously all of the on-demand streaming services um, have radically um, across the world, in fact, um, as Netflix and Amazon uh, kind of video has proven have changed the kind of whole landscape of uh, kind of media um, and we're seeing a lot of movement in that space in terms of consolidation sky who will acquire squat sky how kind of disney uh, kind of uh, kind of moves its business forward um, with various acquisitions um, but if you start to think about kind of other sectors. Uh, there are some that had some early kind of change uh, from technology. So the travel industry, uh, clearly lots of aggregators came online to help people find cheaper flights, uh, cheaper hotels. Um, but actually the way that we travel, uh, the way that you book a flight, um, the way that we book a hotel, the experience in a hotel, the experience on a flight, um, a fairly kind of the same as they were kind of 10 years ago. Technology really hasn't affected that. And I think we're starting to see um, a real demand uh, from consumers for that to be changed and improved. Um, and we're starting to see some interesting businesses, particularly when you look in the travel space coming out of Asia that are disrupting in the hospitality space. But what about kind of the kind of professional services sector? It's a business that I've spent quite a lot of my career in, uh, whether that be advertising or management consultancy. Um, and there hasn't been a lot of talk about those industry being disrupted um, from the criteria that CB Insights put out there. But I think there's some other uh, criteria that need to be thought about here. The first is, are they significantly driven by human capital? Um, is it majority wise driven by people um, and not by technology? Um, is it's a high margin kind of business. Um, is it a business where there is kind of an opaqueness, i.e. kind of not particularly transparent way of where money is being made? I and mean, then lastly, is there short term value created that doesn't necessarily kind of last forever? So an example might be a consulting project that a big four consultant does. They come in and suggest and change for the next six to 12 months, but in six to 12 months, it's redundant and it needs to start all over again. So um, 
if you'd have thought about those criteria when you're looking at advertising and management consultancy, you would say that both of those industries are ripe for disruption. The ad industry has felt very kind of clearly in the last six to 12 months uh, that disruption, but management consultants still continue to grow. Uh, it kind of mystifies me somewhat that you can have a business um, like Accenture, which has almost half a billion people, um, and its model is based on charging those people out and the cost of those people plus a margin on top. Um, that feels like a model that will be disrupted. If you think about Upwork, uh, which is a platform for freelancers, um, or if you think about Catalan, which is another kind of platform for men for getting consultants for a business, or even kind of closer to my heart, Measure Match, a business that I advise for, uh, which is a platform uh, for businesses that are undergoing transformation to access data analytics and tech talent, then you can see that actually industries that haven't necessarily been talked about being disrupted are very, very kind of uh, kind of in the, in, in the foray for, for, for digital disruption going forward. So um, another category which I touched on earlier um, and, and Tom talked about was automotive. Um, you look at those original criteria, it doesn't necessarily look like it's going to be disrupted, but Everywhere around kind of automotive disruption is coming, whether it is self-driving cars, whether it's people actually no longer buying cars and just renting them um, as they do when they go on holiday. Um, millennials don't necessarily want to own a car and have all of the hassle of tax and insurance. Uh, whether it's technology in the car, um, a lot of the tech companies in Silicon Valley are actually thinking about a car as a mobile device. So technology on wheels, if you like. Um, and also, uh, kind of clearly, we've got a lot of legislation around diesel and emissions. And so the automotive industry is very, very much prone to disruption. Yet some of the classic ways that we would look at whether it's kind of prone to disruption maybe wouldn't give you that answer. So for what that tells me, it tells me that no business can be, uh, can, can be uh, kind of sit on their laurels uh, and not think about how technology is going to suddenly come from nowhere and change their business. When we first thought about kind of disruption, we probably thought about businesses where it was there was very little kind of kind of barrier to entry. Um, I'd argue that actually even the kind of biggest industries, the barriers to entry are significantly lower these days because overheads, the cost of resources, uh, kind of multiple offices and kind of complex infrastructure kind of make easy targets for tech kind of lean startups to have a go at. So the final question, I guess, is therefore. Are there any industries that um, are not uh, going to be in the in the kind of in the kind of medium term kind of line for disruption? And Tom uh, kind of threw out through. He talked about funeral services, very established businesses go back through generations, um, and you can't really see that technology will change that significantly, particularly given some of the legislation around it. Um, and the other two he picked were potato picking and coffee roasting. Um, now. Clearly, they are businesses that require people and they require craft. But you could argue that technology will speed up the way that potatoes can be taken out of the ground and transported. And technology will also kind of do the same when it comes to distribution of coffee. But they are areas where arguably disruption uh, will have less of an immediate impact. So my question to you um, as the viewers is what other industries do you think uh, are more immune to disruption? Are there businesses that there are criteria for that we can almost go look through those criteria and say those businesses will be will be kind of safer for, for the foreseeable future? So please kind of in the comments below, give me your thoughts, give me the industries that you feel uh, won't be disrupted. Um, and if you liked the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up um, and give me a comment on, comment on anything uh, that you file feel is important um, in this particular topic. I've tried to make this a bit shorter and sharper, um, but as always, um, end Ended up kind of talking for longer than I planned to. Um, if you haven't subscribed, then please remember uh, to subscribe so that you'll get updated about the new videos. So thanks as always for watching. Um, I'll be back for episode 10 next time, which will be a special episode, uh, given it's the kind of first kind of big number that I've hit um, as a uh, kind of vlogger. Um, so hope to see you soon. Cheers.